You don't know what it means to have power over women. I don't have power over anyone. I barely have power over myself. But you do have power over people. And again and again, you abuse that power. OMG, guys, is that the horse from Horsin' Around? No, it's just Lego Batman as a horse. Maybe he's a furry. Darn it. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about Bojack Horseman. Or more specifically... Wow, strangely, there really is no specifically. It's about Bojack, the character, and also the show. Now, much like Rick, Bojack has resonated with many, many people. The thing is, even though he's a great character, we aren't supposed to relate to Bojack. That's a bad thing. If you relate to Bojack, you should definitely get help. As a result, the show has often had Bojack do lots of bad stuff. And we're going to count down the top 17, ah, I told you, worst things Bojack has done throughout the show. Taking into account why he did them, the consequences that ensued, all that jazz. Even if we can all agree that number one is going to a grocery store and stealing muffins from Neil McBeal, the Navy SEAL, when he had called dibs on them and came back from the war. Nah, that's not number one. So, let's discuss. Big celebrity. Say hello to... Daniel Radcliffe! I am Daniel Radcliffe. Hello! Oh my god, it's Daniel Radcliffe! In season two, Mr. Peanut Butter becomes a game host on an exciting new show. <sighs> Bear with me now. Hollywood stars and celebrities. What do they know? Do they know things? Let's find out. I keep getting the do they know things thing like flipped over with the other one. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the show involves celebrities answering questions, which can range from easy to weird to creepy to comical. And the prize money is donated to charity. Bojack's competitor is Daniel Radcliffe, who apparently reached out to the creators to be in the show because he was a big fan. The real one, not the cartoon one. Throughout the show, Daniel Radcliffe gets on Bojack's last nerves, especially since he apparently cannot remember Bojack's name. We've actually met before at Chris Martin's holiday party. Mm. We stepped outside for a smoke to get away from Chris Martin. You said I was a true friend and you would never forget me. And you said your name was Chadwick Boseman? But he is markedly friendly to everybody else. Famous as I am, you meet so many people. Um, sorry, we need you guys back on set. Hey, you were the second hairdresser's assistant on The Ellen Show. The game show sucks, but Bojack keeps playing, if it means he can beat Daniel. At the game's end, after an especially huge argument with the show host, Bojack wins it big, or he will, if he correctly answers one question. Which famous actor played the titular role in the popular Harry Potter film franchise. Oh. Huh. Out of spite, he intentionally gets the question wrong. Are you serious right now? Dude, this is for charity. Elijah Wood. What? Oh. And all of the money, which again was supposed to go to charity, is burned. Well, yes, it's hilarious. It's still a really bad thing to do. Even after taxes, that is still a lot of money. Think of what it could have gone to do. And Bojack simply had it destroyed out of spite. And honestly, even though the episode kind of wants me to think like, oh, he's a bad guy, I don't think Daniel Radcliffe was that bad. Maybe a little spacey and a bit of a jerk, but, but was what he did to Bojack really worth destroying all that money? Especially given all Bojack worked for that episode, like the essay segment. And while Daniel's in the booth, Bojack, you have an essay question. What? You'll find your blue book on your podium. To what extent was feudalism a cause of the French Revolution? Wait, are you serious? And go! <laughs> I guess Marcy was kind of a poking holes in the condom type. Real nutter. Good lay, though. Glad to hear my mother was a nutter and a good lay. Throughout his life, Bojack has slept with a lot of women. I mean, he lives in Hollywood, and he's hungry like a horse. Pun very much intended. Therefore, he has established a very particular system. He sleeps with them, then gives them fake numbers, which are really numbers to fast food restaurants. Oh, Bojack, I'm sorry, I really wanted to tell you, but when I called the number that you gave me, it was for a sandwich shop in Temecula. What? That's so weird. Eh, at least they can eat their troubles away. And if any of them end up pregnant, he sends them a check labeled 
Bojack's half of the abortion, and then cuts off all contact with them. Among these women was Marcy Jeromanek. Marcy Jeromanek. The president of his fan club, who he slept with in 1999. Hey, the year I was born. I'm 11 months older than Hollyhock. Which already, that's pretty bad because position of authority. But like all other examples, Bojack hit it and quit it. And this drove Marcy insane. And he didn't call me again. I just got so jealous. So I made a list of every girl he was with and I found their home addresses. Oh! And drew X's over their eyes. In the present day, Bojack and Hollyhock go to see if maybe she is her mother. She says that yes, she is. Only it turns out she isn't, despite her claims to the contrary. She just wants an excuse for Bojack to be in her life. However, she did make a scrapbook of all of Bojack's girlfriends the same year. While Hollyhock retrieves it, Bojack distracts Marcy. If we get the book, we can find my mom. Give me a few minutes, I'll distract her. Then you sneak in and grab the book. Will he tell her a funny story? Sing a song about random crap? Well... Uh, you said give you a few minutes! Well, I didn't think it would take this long. I usually finish faster. You're disgusting! Oh, that's what I needed. Okay, while it's awful how he treated Marcy, keep in mind that, at the time, he thought Hollyhock was his daughter. And despite it being played as a joke, it's still pretty messed up. It would be traumatic to any kid. I mean, it's dramatic when you had a nightmare and you hear a noise coming from your parents' room and you think your parents are looking for their contacts and then you open the door and wait, what were we talking about? If it were up to me, that old house would have been torn down years ago. And that broken door is the cherry on the top of the <coughs> sandwich. What kind of a sandwich has cherries on top? A <coughs> one. Look, dude, I think you provided me with my favorite insult from this show. And I myself massively hate cherries, so I agree with you. In season three, Bojack has a panic attack and attempts to take his own life. That's when, when he's in the desert, he suddenly sees a bunch of feral horses and gives up that chance. I still wonder about them to this day. Like, what exactly were they? Like a jogging group? Was Bojack hallucinating? Instead, Bojack ends up driving back to Lake Harper in Michigan, where his family used to take vacations. Wait, is that why he named his daughter that in Downer Ending, he shacks up in the family vacation home, which has become neglected and dirty through years of abandonment. His next door neighbor is a dragonfly named Eddie, who has become a hermit since his wife Lorraine died of an accident he caused. She wanted to go back, but I wanted to see how high we could go. You wanna know how Lorraine felt when she got sucked into that engine? We're all just tiny bugs, right? leave it to Bojack to make a comical situation frickin' dark. As a result, he refuses to fly despite Bojack's protest and how much easier it would make his life. Bojack starts to fix up the house and Eddie helps out. Hey, that rhymes. It allows Bojack to be close to somebody who doesn't know he's famous, and it allows Eddie to come more out of his shell. Or exoskeleton. Wait, do dragonflies have exoskeletons? That is, until Bojack tricks him into flying. How many times do I have to tell you I don't fly? You're flying right now! Oh, oh. Why'd you make me do that? Which sends him into a mental breakdown worthy of Bill Dotrieff and nearly kills them both. Bojack saves them and gives Eddie CPR, but... Are you insane? I don't want to live. Why did you save me? <laughs> Oh, dang, dude. They end up finishing the house, but almost immediately afterwards, Bojack decides to have it demolished, despite all of the hard work they put into making it, which took a year of their lives to complete. The fact Bojack could sell it, give it to Eddie, or really any other reason. And he never gives a straightforward reason to Eddie. A true reason, just a vague one. Uh, yeah. You think I just want to mope around in a shrine to the past, getting off on my own guilt while the rest of my life passes me by? Pathetic much? Obviously, considering the flashback B-plot of this episode, I think he's got a point. But the fact he just abandons the house after everything that's happened, yeah, that is pretty cruel of him. So what was all this for? I don't know. I guess it was just a big waste of time. But you can't change the past. Time's arrow marches on, right? 
Keep in mind, this happened shortly after Eddie's breakdown. Like most summer destinations, Harper's Landing seems to be empty most of the year, and he's all alone. While well, we see that Bojack's mental health recovered and he's decided to stop living in the past, the same isn't said of Eddie. When Bojack goes home, what'll happen to him? It kinda hurts to wonder. And it was vodka, right? How... how do you know about that? You were bringing vodka to the set of Horsin' Around. Who told you all this stuff? Did Sharona tell you that? Now, as somebody who has been in group therapy a couple of times, one of the biggest tenets is that whatever you say in group stays in group. After all, it's a safe space and it takes a lot of guts to stand up and spill your secrets to a bunch of strangers. In season six, Bojack starts to attend AA meetings near his house, and they seem to be helping him in his sobriety journey. That's when he realizes he knows somebody there, Sharona. If it wasn't for me, they would have canceled the whole show. And then where would you go? I mean, who's gonna hire a hair and makeup lady with shaky hands? My hands only shake when I don't drink. Yeah, be sure to put that on your resume. Getting fired from horsing around caused Sharona to hit rock bottom and finally get her act together. And while she is rocky to Bojack at first, she soon realizes he is genuine and they bury the hatchet. Just let me say it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It was nice of you to bring Panda Express for everyone. Right, everyone. Which is solidified by her giving Bojack a haircut, just like old times, which makes him look more his age. <laughs> what do you think? I look old. All is right in the world until Bojack does the second interview, which lays bare every horrible thing he's done throughout the series. Bojack is confused as to how Biscuits got her damning information and wonders if it could have been somebody close to him. Because Sharona was a drunk too, so you can't trust the thing she says. Obviously, she has a vendetta against me. Besides, I already apologized to her. Apologized for what? No, it was Dr. Champ, but that's another can of worms. Once again, AA is is Alcoholics Anonymous. You aren't meant to tell outsiders your secrets or say who's with you. That's their business and their business only. And keep in mind, Sharona massively improved, which likely was a hard journey of her own and quite admirable. But to save himself, Bojack went on national television and pretty much made her out to be a dirty alcoholic who betrayed him. It's no wonder that the next time he goes to AA, Sharona isn't there. Was she too ashamed? Did he cause her to relapse or put her in that position? What did the people close to her think? At least the other AA members were on her side and did not approve of what Bojack did one tiny bit. Okay, rude. Shh. Good for them. Wow, how long was I talking? I hope that was cathartic for you. You want to come back same time tomorrow? Wait a minute. I see what's going on here. Are you... My new best friend! If you couldn't guess from my many videos, I am a huge proponent of therapy. It's not witchcraft, it's there to help you. It just sucks not as many people can afford it or have access to it. Obviously, it's not the end-all solution. You still need to do the work. It's kind of like they show you how to make a fire and then you have to make the fire. But it is a great first step and you aren't weak for going. In Interior Sub, Diane has been going to her therapist, Indira, in order to deal with the emotional fallout of her divorce with Mr. Peanut Butter and also the tape she acquired from Anna Sponacopita, which implicated Bojack and Penny. Around the same time, Bojack's mother has bit the dust, and Bojack wants to deal with the grief, while also making it clear to everybody he does not want sympathy. It's a weird flex. I'm here, and I'm doing fine. I just want to focus on the show. So please treat this like any other day and be extra nice to me because I am a famous actor, not because my mom died. Eventually, Bojack establishes a system with Indira where they'll have therapy sessions during her lunch hour, but they won't call what they're doing therapy. If I'm still dreaming. Oh, that's our time. 
a friendship hour. I'm just so glad that I can help break up your day of listening to whiny babies with some entertaining lunchtime convo. The session seemed to help Bojack until he unintentionally lets it slip to Diane that he went behind her back and saw Indira, despite specifically being told not to do that. How long has he been your client? Not a client. Three sessions. Days. Friends for three days. I asked for one part of my life that I could have to myself. Diane thinks it's crossing a huge boundary and drops Indira as a therapist, somebody she's likely known for years. And as Diane is not in a good place financially, possibly the only form of help she could afford at the moment. Trust me, I've been there, it really sucks. However, soon after, Bojack stops attending therapy as he's too afraid of actually confronting his own problems. And now comes the even harder part, getting the help. Let's talk about your mother. You know what? This has been great. I got what I wanted and I made so much progress, so I think I'm done. And he further refuses Diane's request to go to another therapist. Yeah, not the best thing he's ever done. The fact that you're setting a boundary is good. Go forth with the tools I've given you. Live your life, Diana, like a candle in the wind. I can't believe this is happening. I think Bobo needs me more. But maybe Diane did the right thing cutting off Indira. She crossed a huge boundary and Indira Indira would constantly bring up other patients, which is a definite violation of HEPA. I mean, she isn't a therapy horse, she doesn't have that right. But her saying that sometimes taking trips can help you deal with emotional problems, that's a piece of advice I have taken to heart. That's totally why I don't do cons. I saw something in you, something most people don't know you have, and it kills me that instead of sharing it with the world, you want to hide it under some Wonderland unicorn nonsense. This one actually hurts me, especially as a creative. Normally, whenever Bojack does something wrong, it's because he's acting selfish or he simply doesn't care. And when he realizes there's consequences, he bails. Here, he tried doing something good and it was still awful. In season two, Bojack starts work on his dream movie role, a biopic on Secretariat. Unfortunately, during a production hiatus, the producers, led by Lenny Turtletop, retool it into a feel-good family story, not an edgy, gritty, realistic movie, as the feel-good story angle would do better at the box office. And usually, that's what's most important to the studios. Unless you're the dudes who made Cats. Bojack dislikes this new direction, as does the film's director, Kelsey Jannings. Speaking of, not trying to get off topic, but I kind of like this point. Being a director doesn't always mean what you think it means. You don't always have the last say, or it might not even be your movie. You could either be somebody like Tarantino, where you still have your own identity and decisions, or you could just be a student hired by the producers into doing what they want. Just saying, in most media, the director is normally the end-all be-all, so thank you Bojack for bringing this up. Kelsey agrees with Bojack that the new vision will only hurt the movie they've been striving towards, and they decide to get Turtle Top to see things their way. How? Well, they'll shoot the most emotionally pivotal scene on site at the Nixon Presidential Library in Yorba Linda, which is apparently a 30-minute drive from LA. I'm sorry, I had no clue. I still forget San Francisco was like a six-hour drive from there. Like, TV makes it seem like they're only two hours. We can sneak into the library tonight and get the shot, gorilla style. Once Turtle Top sees it, he'll love it, and we can make the movie we both want to make. They go through hoops to get the shot, down to staging a nearby break-in to distract the cops. And then they show Turtle Top the footage, which they are quite proud of. It's probably Bojack's best work to date. Only, the next day, Bojack comes back to see that Kelsey has been fired and replaced by Abe to Catfish, who, while a nice man, is a stooge, totally willing to tow with the party line. Oh, it hurts. As it turns out, Turtle Top wasn't convinced and Kelsey was fired for going against his orders because, as director, it was her responsibility to tell Bojack that they weren't allowed to do this and to make sure nothing could go wrong. And in a way, it was also kind of illegal. I mean, they broke into somewhere. Oh yeah, funny story. Turns out you two knucklehead snuck out last night and got that shot I told you not to get for the scene that's not in the movie anymore. Uh... 
Silly me, I didn't like that. What makes it worse is that Kelsey admitted to Bojack her career was in the toilet, and she was only doing this movie to help support herself and her daughter. What makes it worse is Bojack tries multiple times to try and help her, and they all fail. Like in season three, when he tries to make it up to Kelsey by offering to help get her jelly bean movie produced, which even Anna is all for. This jelly bean thing could show the world that Bojack's more than just a movie star. He's an actor. But as Princess Carolyn spends the entire episode trying to stand up to her rival, Vanessa Gecko, who also happens to be Kelsey's agent, she ends up overplaying her hand and insists on too much money, which costs Bojack his chance to patch things up and costs Kelsey another film role. Yeah? Why'd your agent keep demanding more money? What? Now the option's expired and I'm screwed. Oh. Why did I get my hopes up? Why do I keep letting you get my hopes up? It isn't until season six that her career begins to pick up by directing the female-led superhero movie Fire Flame. Keep in mind that Bojack happens in real time, kinda, where one year passes between seasons, so Kelsey spent all that time in the toilet, and it hurts. All we need is the horse. And that horse is just gonna go along with you canning his best friend? You want Bojack to betray me? You're gonna need one hell of a pitch. Okay. Oh boy, this one was super tricky. When Horsin' Around was at its peak, Herb was the showrunner. However, he was arrested one night for lewd acts with another man in a public park. Horsin' Around is a show for kids. My family should be able to watch those nubile preteens without men like Perv Kazaz flaunting their alternative lifestyles and ruining America. Remember, this was the 90s. Herb tells Bojack that the executives want to fire him over the scandal. But if Bojack threatens to quit, nothing bad will happen and things will simply blow over. You know I wouldn't ask if I didn't need it. Come on, Bojack. How'd we get so far apart, huh? <sighs> to prove a point to Herb, Angela had browbeaten Bojack into thinking that if he stood up for his friend, he would get fired too, and the show would be canceled, and they would all be blacklisted. Right when Bojack's career was starting to take off. And sometimes being a star means making tough choices. You can storm out, make a big show out of what a good friend you are, or you could be the guy who does his job. And to be fair, I still think Herb should have told Bojack the full truth, that the executives are bluffing and there's no way they could do horsing around without the horse. That would have massively helped, but the point still stands that Bojack did a horrible thing and betrayed his friend. He effectively let the executives sack him, and then he ghosted him. In season one, Herb is dying of cancer, and Bojack goes to say goodbye to him, despite the fact they haven't talked in literal decades. Even if he got fired in a super humiliating fashion, Herb did not wallow like Bojack would have. He got his life together, started a charity, and did a lot of good. He wasn't living in the past. Do you think that I spent the last 20 years on my couch just feeling sorry for myself? I also started <coughs> a charity to bring clean water to millions of children in sub-Saharan Africa. I presented at the Teen Choice Awards. The pair actually have a good moment together, and they're about to say goodbye and end things on positive terms. When Bojack tries to apologize to Herb, and that rhymes. You're apologizing? Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't forgive you. Herb, I said I'm sorry. Yeah. And I do not forgive you. Which I kinda understand. Why the f do you think you deserve forgiveness? As Herb says, just because he got fired did not mean their friendship had to end. He could have called Herb, explained what happened, and they just wouldn't have a working relationship. And considering how the telescope showed they were in a bad spot before Herb's scandal, maybe not working so closely together would have been good for them. I think that we'd both feel better if we I'm just... I'm dying! I'm not gonna feel better, and I'm not gonna be your prop so you can feel better. Plus, as Herb realizes, Bojack wasn't truly sorry. He was just saying that to make himself feel better. You'd probably sleep a lot better at night if you just admitted to yourself that you're a selfish goddamn coward. Oh, poor Herb and his bodily dislike of peanuts. I said peanuts, like the thing you eat. If you get hurt again and a doctor, a real doctor, prescribes you painkillers, you can take them. But only if you get hurt again. Okay. You promise? 
Yes. While I am super upset, the show never makes the point it's Princess Carolyn that got Bojack addicted as she was too busy dealing with Sadie and her adoption plans to notice what was going on and just gave a short-term solution. I think what happens afterwards is Bojack's fault. While working on Filbert, Bojack suffers a debilitating back injury. And to make sure he can go back to acting and quickly, on PC's orders, the production studio supplies him with enough pain pills to kill a small horse. Oh, wait. Uh, it's your fault? I feel amazing? I don't know what that doctor gave me, but man, you should leave town more often. Shortly afterwards, Hollyhock comes over for a visit. Ugh. You okay? You look like you've just seen a Ghost in the Shell screening and you're Scarlett Johansson's publicist. It's weird to be back in this house. This is where it all happened with your mom. Just for the sake of context, the last time Hollyhock was at Bojack's house, Bojack's mother, who had dementia, poisoned her with amphetamines in an effort to help her lose weight, and Hollyhock nearly died. So when she sees Bojack's pain pills, she assumes he's trying to poison her again. Oh no. God, did you put this in my pizza? What? Of course not. Hollyhock, those work for my back. Wait, for real? Yes. Oh, then actually, oop. Now, another prevailing theme in season five is that Bojack is trying very hard to overcome many of his own vices and addictions, like only drinking a little bit of alcohol each day and marking how much he can take from a bottle. Hey, why do you have a vodka bottle for every day of the week? Oh, that's just my new system I'm trying. But he slowly develops another problem, this time with opioids. Oh my god, Selberg did an episode on that. He instead spends what should have been a fun visit dragging Hollyhock all over town by trying to get more pills. When it's time for Hollyhock to go home, Bojack promises to get better. Okay, I love you. <sighs> but he's still empty and he won't get his pills unless he has a legitimate reason, i.e. a debilitating injury. <sighs> well, this doesn't really come up again, as most everybody probably assumes it was an accident. The fact of the matter remains that Bojack intentionally drove his car into oncoming traffic and could have killed himself and other people just to get his fix. It's a pretty horrific thing for any person to do. And to top it off, we never find out what happened to the other people in the other cars. I hope they're alright. I'm at a place right now where I never need to grow as a person or rise to an occasion because I can constantly just surround myself with sycophants and enablers until I die tragically young. As you can guess, many of these entries are going to involve Sierra Lynn in some way, shape, or form. Bojack got his start on the sitcom Horsin' Around, which is basically Full House with a horse, and a horse with no name. Oh, like the song! It's a kitschy, cheesy sitcom that is still fondly remembered today. But does it air on Nick at Night, or did Nick at Night kick it off in order to get more Mike and Molly and Mom and Friends reruns? The youngest child and critical darling was Sarah Lynn. As we all know, Sarah Lynn had an awful childhood. Her stage mom forced her to perform as a meal ticket and isolated her from the other kids, while her stepfather was abusive that way. Just saying, she knew what bear fur was by just licking it. And her stepfather is a bear. And also based on a creepy, evil photographer. At one point, Sarah Lynn had to do her hair and makeup in Bojack's dressing room. Why can't you do this in Sarah Lynn's dressing room? My stepdad's in there and he's being weird. Why is that my problem? We appreciate your hospitality. When they were first starting out, Bojack imparted some wisdom on Sarah Lynn, which she took to heart. Life is a stage and you never stop performing even if it kills you. Your only value comes from performing and and making people laugh or applaud. Your family will never understand you. Your lovers will leave you or try to change you. But your fans, you be good to them and they'll be good to you. You gotta give the people what they want, even if it kills you, even if it empties you out until there's nothing left. Dang, dude, you didn't have to go that hard. Oh, and they started filming like a second later. And 
Action! Why aren't you dressed for school, Prickly Muffin? I wonder if that made it into the final cut. As the show progressed, the family Herb tried to build between the actors was slowly breaking down, and Bojack was partially to blame as he had a responsibility to those kids, and he failed them. Sarah Lynn especially. Herb was gonna throw that all away. I made the tough choice. What did you do? I... I don't know. Oh, Jack, she's 10. Yeah, which is basically an adult in Hollywood years. One incident was, after Herb got fired, he rushed aside Sarah Lynn's concerns that the show would be weird to do without Herb, and he put her into a position that made her want to try alcohol, despite only being 10 years old. <sighs> hey, I know you feel but don't take it out on a little girl. I don't feel I feel great! When the new showrunner, Danny, said that Sarah Lynn's mother wanted to sue for the damages, Bojack lied and said he wasn't the reason she drank. It was Sharona, the hairdresser. Because if it was, we're all in real trouble. You get what I'm saying? Y yeah So you don't know where she got the alcohol from? Yeah, I have no idea. Which, in a way, is correct, even if it is still partially his fault. He should get some responsibility, too. But to keep his job and the show from getting cancelled, or at least experiencing another scandal, he forced Sharona to quit and take a job on another show. It could be a fresh start for you. There's no such thing as a fresh start. What if I say no? Nobody is asking you. Sharana. Meaning Sarah Lynn practically lost her last friend on set. Yeah, thanks BJ. This is Ethan around. It's your show and we need to tell the audience that. You can't give all the best jokes to me. I don't know, Bojack. You really think I'm ready for a that went well? While the horse and around cast all took different paths in life, the only one of them who did not stay in some form of show business was Bradley Hitler Smith, who played the middle child and brainiac Ethan. Bradley moved out of California, ended up opening his own hardware store, getting married, and having a family. I miss the warmth of the spotlight on my face, the thrill of telling a joke and feeling it land. Is that a thrill you experienced? The sitcom stage is my home. Compared to everybody else, it's a B-plus life, but one he's pretty content with. In essence, he was the only one of the child actors who fulfilled his dream of having a normal life. However, he desperately wants to get back out there and writes his own pilot for a spinoff of Horse and Around, called Ethan Around where Ethan grows up and, in the spirit of the horse who adopted him, adopts three little horses. And he wants Bojack to be a part of it, even offering to work around his very busy schedule if that's what it takes. It's not officially happening or anything. I would love for you to be part of it, but the horse died in the series finale. So, we could write around that. The horse dying was just a dream. At first, Bojack isn't totally comfortable with the idea and has Anna Spanakopita tell off Bradley for him. Bojack is about to win an Oscar. Why do you think he will want to do your soon-to-fail sitcom about the further adventures of a carp-faced nobody? Um, ouch. But Bojack eventually gives in and pitches ideas to the pilot, being especially excited himself. Like, uh, that went well. Yes, that was great. And that was a great look. With the eyebrow? What if we both did that? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at you like, this parenting thing is gonna be harder than I thought. The only problem is, as Ethan is the vanilla, boring character, Bojack has to be involved in the series, outside of being producer. He has to reprise his role as the horse. On day one, filming seems to be going well, until Bojack makes small talk with one of the child actors, who reminds him of Sarah Lynn. What do you want to be when you grow up, Chloe? What do you mean? I, I want to be like you. Like me? I want to be famous. Oh no. This causes Bojack to run away from the set and goes pretty much everybody in his life for a whole year, Ethan included. Everything okay? I can't be here. I can't do this again. This isn't right. What do you mean? I need to go. We need to shoot the rest of this episode. I'm sorry. I, I, I just... I, I don't belong here. Now, the reason for this being on the list is, well, it's for two reasons. First off, the child actress. Yes, she reminded him of Sarah Lynn in a really bad way. And keep in mind, this was maybe a couple of weeks after Sarah Lynn died. We all know that story. But is it so bad that Bojack was there? Maybe the pilot won't be successful. Or Bojack could have been there to teach her that while acting is a job and Hollywood is toxic, 
music, you can't let it consume you. Do what you love, but get an education. Be sure you have a backup plan. Stay healthy. And if acting isn't what you end up wanting to do, that's okay. Let me compare the situation to Mara Wilson and Danny DeVito. When they were filming Matilda, Mara's mother was on death's door, so he and Rhea Perlman helped Mara in any way they could, inviting her over for pool parties when her mom was at the hospital, stuff like that. To the point where they practically became a second family to her. And they're close even today. And as far as child actors go, Mara is pretty healthy, living her best life, writing, being an alba boss. It's very possible that things could have ended up well if Bojack just decided to break the cycle. Second, Ethan did a lot to get to California, including selling his house in Washington and his store. And Bojack left without even finishing what he had promised to do. Now, if the pilot wasn't picked up, that would have been one thing, but Really, Bojack is the reason it never got finished. The worst part is, we never find out what happens to Ethan. Even Bojack wonders, did he and his family end up penniless? Did he manage to go back home? Is he stuck in LA? How much money did he lose? Hey, maybe a round will pay good in residuals. Hopefully better than horse in a round. I love you, Sarah Lynn. Sarah Lynn? Sarah Lynn? What? Oh my god, thank god you're okay. I'm not okay. I'm bored. Yeah, Sarah Lynn was not one of Bojack's strong points. I know I already made a video on it, and admittedly, I did not explain my points well enough, but some of my complaints do stand. In season 3, Sarah Lynn decides to go sober, not because she had a near-death experience, or she realizes she shouldn't be doing drugs or something like that, but because she heard if you stop using, you get better highs, as your body effectively goes through a palate cleanser, at the expense of you losing that tolerance you built up. Because I heard if you stop doing drugs for a while, the first time you do them again, it's amazing. Keep this in mind. Bojack encourages her to keep at it, which she refuses. What? No, God, just stay sober. Ugh, whatever. Call me when you're ready to party. Again, keep this in mind going forward, because honestly, the show really did not. As season three progresses, Bojack continues to experience low after low, and the breaking point comes when he finds out he was never nominated for an Oscar. So his sacrifices, like sleeping with Emily, aren't really for anything, and Todd cut him off for finding out the truth. As a result, he goes to Sarah Lynn and requests that she go on a bender with him. Bojack? Hey, Sarah Lynn. You want a party? Oh, thank God. Yes! <laughs> Now, yes, I do think to some degree, Sarah Lynn herself was responsible for relapsing. And you could make the point, maybe she could have done it any day. I mean, she literally kept drugs stashed around her house and kept drinking even if she wasn't supposed to. She just figured the latter was a loophole. That's no reason for me to not get my chip. That's literally exactly the reason you shouldn't get your chip. Nowhere in the 12 steps does it say to not drink. That's not actually one of the steps. Loophole. But what got me was that Bojack knows she's the type of person who would use any excuse if it meant she got to use again. And he's an addict himself. He knows how easy it is to go right back to square one, despite all the progress you made. Because the substance just seems so tempting. Come on, it's like Tiffany said, Rome wasn't built in a day, you know. And despite his previous statements, he did not care that Sarah Lynn was sober. He just wanted an excuse to indulge himself while having a buddy. The two spend weeks upon weeks partying, and Sarah Lynn brings him to her support group, where on top of telling everybody about Penny, idiot, he learns one of the tenets of the program. You make amends with the people you wronged. You just say you're sorry for the things you did and you get a clean slate. Just dirty up the slate again. Then you just make amends again. It's a never-ending cycle where you always end up feeling good about yourself. Even if forgiveness isn't this easy and it doesn't erase your past mistakes. Maybe your victims don't want to be around you for whatever reason. Or what you did is too big you can't take it back. And on top of that, saying sorry doesn't magically wipe away your mistakes. You need to truly own up to what you did and you need to work towards redemption. So they spend their 
entire binge going in and out of consciousness. And he spends it trying to make amends with people. But nine times out of ten, it's just him annoying his friends. Finally, they go to a ratty motel, only to realize it's the night of the Oscars. Ah, <gasps> oh, the Oscars are on! Really? How long have we been on this bender? Well, according to the wiki, it's about a month. According to the calendar, the binge started on January 15th. And the Oscars that year were held on February 28th. So, yeah, maybe a little over a month. Sarah Lynn sees that she won an Oscar. And her stepfather, who abused her, accepted it on her behalf. And she starts to have a realization. Did her life amount to anything? Bojack, I don't like anything about me. Hey. None of this is me. Finally, Bojack honors her request to take her to the planetarium, which she has been hounding him about this entire trip, and allow her to go crazy. Yeah, that's cool too, but I meant this building. It's a giant dome. <sighs> Domes are so cool. <sighs> Oh, I want to be an architect. A reason I split this off from other sections is, first off, to show you how truly despicable Bojack treated Sarah Lynn. And because, while we know what happens next, it was still leading up to something. But this entire episode, he treated her especially selfishly. And when he finally took her to the planetarium, it wasn't to make her feel better when she's suffering a breakdown, or when subconsciously she realizes she's about to die, but to make himself feel better about his own shortcomings. Just listen to what he says. We're not doomed. In the great grand scheme of things, we're just tiny specks that will one day be forgotten. So it doesn't matter what we did in the past or how we'll be remembered. That's too much, man. That means Margot Martindale likes tapes! And a tape is something you listen to, but tape is also a sticky thing you can use to seal boxes. Now, I have a lot of unpopular opinions about Todd, and many of you have been requesting a Todd video. But as it would probably be a death blow to my channel to make it, I likely won't ever put them out there. Or, you know, do it right now, I have stuff. Despite all of my previous statements, that doesn't mean Todd hasn't suffered thanks to Bojack. At the start of the series, the reason Todd is staying with Bojack is because his mother kicked him out of the house. After high school, he got addicted to a video game. Rather than get a job or go to school or move out or something like that, he lost his friends and especially his girlfriend. That game basically destroyed my life. I flunked out of school, my girlfriend left me, I mean I didn't stop playing. Oh, Emily, who isn't on this list. Look, it's not that it's not a bad thing, it's just I always disliked how the show found Bojack the most culpable for sleeping with her while ignoring how it takes two to tango. And Emily came on to him and outright said, Bojack, I want to sleep with you. And Todd and Emily were not dating at the time. Sorry, point is, Todd wandered into Bojack's house during a Halloween party and has stayed there ever since like a stray cat. Wait, is that why Kelsey treated him that way? Because there aren't any pets in this world, the line gets blurry. Hey, how's your little friend with a face? Is he up to his old tricks, getting into scrapes? <laughs> what little scamp? Can you tell him I said hi? In season one, Bojack constantly considers Todd a nuisance and wants him off his couch. And it seems like Bojack will get his wish and the opportunity will come. Todd has written a really good rock opera, which has a chance to propel him to stardom, or at least get him enough money to afford an apartment or a house of his own. On top of that, being friends with Bojack has merits, as he has connections to people like Princess Carolyn, who has arranged for Todd to meet a really good feeder producer who could make his dream a reality. I just need you to deliver that third act showstopper and then we'll be fully financed. Todd can do it! Shortly before he's due to present his opera, Todd tells Bojack the story of how he got addicted to the game. And coincidentally, he seems to find it at the store. Decapathon 7? This just came out. Todd, put it down. Is this really only a dime? If it's in there, that's the price. He buys the game, is tempted not to play it, but he eventually gives in. Yeah. He plays it for so long that he misses the performance and he blows his shot. Give the kid a chance, Van Cleef. Rock opera. More like schlock flabra. 
Clearly, Van Cleef has shown a rare lapse in taste and judgment. I apologize for wasting your time with this talentless imp. He threw away his shot. Now, a big lesson about Bojack Horseman is that you're responsible for your own choices and the consequences that ensue. I would say that Todd was at fault for what happened to him, but this is where it gets a little tricky. As it turns out, Bojack sabotaged Todd's chances by hiring character actress Margot Martindale to sell the ruse, and he planted the game. Thanks for your help, character actress Margot Martindale. I don't feel good about what we did here, Bojack. I don't know what you're talking about. This never happened. Basically, he arranged for Todd to get addicted again because he knew he would not be able to resist. Because if Todd got successful, it would mean he would move out and Bojack would be all alone. I could finally move out. Oh, uh, you're gonna move out. Even if that might not be true, just saying, there's a big chance the rock opera might not happen or maybe Todd still wants to be with his friend. Arguably, this is the first truly awful thing Bojack did that's portrayed as awful. Everything else up to this point is treated like a stupid joke, be it refusing to have a baby with Princess Carolyn as he's afraid of commitment and attacking a random woman and her baby to prove it, or not being able to write a book even if it's bankrupting the publishing company. Later on, when Todd puts the pieces together and discovers that Bojack was the one responsible, what some Sucks is he's not mad, he's just disappointed, like he realized this was gonna happen. Bojack hired Margot Martindale to make me find that video game so he could kill my rock opera! Ah, dude. And later he develops a sad viewpoint on Bojack. As you know, I was hurt, but then I realized that's just how you are. You know, maybe I just need to stop expecting you to be a good person so that way I won't get hurt when you're not. Tragic, tragic! If you wanna watch Bojack Horseman, admittedly, you do have to start with episode one, as it's one of those shows where even one-off lines come back in a big way and they bite you in the butt. However, next to the episode where PC has to work and it turns out she's working on her birthday, I think this is where the show truly begins. This episode caught my attention, PC hooked me in. Oh, it burns. Yeah, because it's not a juice box. You want some? No thanks, I'm driving. Well, more for me. This problem is really bourgeois. While Bojack did a lot of harm to Penny Carson and her mother and their collective mental health, I think people often forget what he did to the people around them. During his stay in New Mexico, Bojack ends up accompanying Penny to her prom after her date drops out to go with someone else, which admittedly, I don't think it's a big deal at first. I mean, it's kind of creepy if you don't know the context, but eh. I know people were saying it's grooming and I do appreciate the show for saying it could still be that without intent because you don't realize the power dynamics but in Bojack's defense he did not go to New Mexico to get with Penny. He wanted to get away from LA and be with Charlotte and when that did not pan out he just made a life for himself. You didn't drive all this way just to see my mom did you? <laughs> no, of course not. That would be crazy to come all this way just to- His only purpose at that dance was to be a chaperone, and to be fair, Penny's father was originally gonna go win, which nobody thought was out of the ordinary. Stop poking holes, Charlotte. This is a great plan. Yeah, Mom. Hey, Dad! Bojack's taking me to prom! Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's definitely the better idea. Bojack goes with Penny and Penny's two friends. Pete and Maddie. The pair are drinking and Bojack doesn't approve as he thinks their concoction will get them sick. Hand it over. Ugh, fine. Ugh. Red Bull and vodka? What are you, 12? You're gonna get sick drinking all that sugar. Instead, Bojack gives them his own liquor. I'm getting you kids some bourbon and you're gonna cut it with water. That way you don't get hung over. Wait, really? If you're gonna drink, you should at least be smart about it. 
awesome. Which I do find the situation a little tricky. He had good intentions and I'm with Regina's mom. Kids are gonna drink and if you want just a sip, it's better to drink in the house where the adults around you can control how much you got. But at the same time, he should not be offering them alcohol in the first place because he did not know them well enough. If anything, I think he should have at most given them one drink or a quick sip and then cut them off. Instead, Bojack gives them his his own concoction until Maddie gets alcohol poisoning and passes out after prom. Hey, Maddie, come on. No, look, my cousin had a friend who passed out like this and she died of alcohol poisoning, man. Like, I really think we should get Maddie to a hospital. Which, if you all know, alcohol poisoning can kill. She gets rushed to the hospital, where Bojack decides to leave her there with Pete, the teenager, because he would be liable if something happened. Why? It, it's one thing if a bunch of kids get drunk together on prom night, but if there's an adult there, then it's like I was supposed to be the responsible one, and then the whole thing feels kind of creepy, you know? And he threatens Pete to keep his mouth shut about what really happened. And what happened to your friends, Bojack and Penny? <sighs> they left early. See? That's not so hard. You're doing the right thing. Don't forget that. Huh. Seems to be a prelude as to what would happen with Sarah Lynn. While this episode is often overshadowed by what happened between Bojack and Charlotte and what almost happened between him and Penny, that doesn't change the fact that Bojack almost killed a random stranger out of recklessness and he put the burden on everything on somebody who is practically a child. Don't worry, as we find out later, Maddie survived, thankfully. Was your girlfriend okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was scary in the moment. We were there all night and they pumped her stomach. But, but the thing, things are good now. Things are good. But her and Pete both had a lot of trauma from the incident. As we saw in season six, Pete could not touch a drop of alcohol for years. And he had a lot of anxiety problems that caused him to seek out therapy. But honestly, if you do have anxiety, his trick really helps. You're having an anxiety attack, so look around the room and tell me what you see. You kind of have to wonder how Maddie is coping as we never hear from her. Speaking of, I heard the theory her parents were Dr. Champ and his husband, which is why Dr. Champ tried to give up drinking. I don't totally buy it because I feel like that would come up at some point, but what do you think? The strangling looks fake. Already told you no spooky voice. You want me to roll my eyes back and stick my tongue out? <laughs> yeah, let's try that. Choking women is wrong, and as a woman, I could say that. Choking women is wrong. In season five, Bojack goes back to scripted television for the first time in years. This time, he's part of a true detective parody called Filbert, playing the titular character. As the show progresses, Bojack starts to devolve, be it because of the filming schedule interfering with his daily life and his sleep schedule, or his opioid addiction. <gasps> oh my god, that's what happened to Eminem. He couldn't take the filming schedule of 8 Mile, he got addicted to sleeping pills, and he almost died. On the set, he starts a relationship with his co-star, Gina Casador. Gina is an up-and-coming actress who wants to make it big in the industry, but she hasn't had any luck until Philbert. You know, I've done so many TV shows, but this is the first one that's kind of turned me into a star. It's a big step up from just recurring on The Cops Are Coming, wee-oo, wee-oo. Bojack wants to help her, but his efforts don't always work. Like when he embarrassed her by encouraging her to sing about her corn musical to Princess Carolyn and Flip in an effort to get her to express herself. Only it majorly embarrasses her. I'm sorry, I'm gonna go. Thank you, and I'm sorry, and <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm just gonna say it, that was weird. I wonder what she thought about Shucked. You know, I never saw that musical. Eventually, the two start to date, until we get to the showstopper. Bojack has started to devolve further and further as a result of his new addiction, and he's starting to lose the ability to tell fiction from reality. For example, he thinks somebody is out to get him, as he finds a flyer in his house. Only, it turns out this was a marketing tactic. Are you serious? Someone is trying to blackmail me. Bojack, this is from the show. What? 
It's marketing. You don't remember shooting that scene? Well, I, I, I guess I've been a little distracted. He and Gina eventually get into an argument where she finds his stash and he attacks her. Gina, I'm not kidding. The pills. Now! You're out of control. Give them to me! Let's go! Ah, you're hurting me! Ah. Only as he can't come in and out of reality, he doesn't realize they're still filming and he starts to choke her and he doesn't stop. I think he's... Really strangling her. What? Oh no. Turn the camera back on. Ew, Tarantino much? Gina almost dies, but Mr. Peanut Butter rips Bojack off in time. <laughs> what the f is wrong with you? Don't worry, Gina. If you died, you would get to go to hell and date a nice demon princess with a voice that roars, and you'll be stupid in love. Bojack eventually wakes up, but somebody leaks to the press a video of him choking Gina, and he's forced to go on national television with his own victim and swear it was all a misunderstanding. <clears throat> hey. Hello, Bojack. Are you okay? You look good. Yeah. Makeup covered the bruises. Oh, that's a nice detail of having them put the hair in front of her neck to cover up the bruises. Compared to many of his previous actions, here, Bojack actually wants to come clean and face consequences, which Gina begs him not to do, as she doesn't want to derail her career. I am getting offers and fan mail and magazine columns about what a good actor I am. People know me because of my acting. I don't want you to be the most notable thing that ever happened to me. I don't want you to be the question I get asked in interviews for the rest of my life. However, she makes one point clear. I will be civil to you on set when we have scenes together, but otherwise, I never want to think about you again. Hey guys, how are we doing? So good, Biscuits. Ironically, Philbert would get canceled for totally unrelated reasons, but yeah. In many ways, as much as Gina was worried that admitting would hurt her career, it seems like she probably would have been better off if she just told the truth. She now has PTSD, and as all of Hollywood doesn't know what happened, they assume she's a hard to work with diva. She's great on camera, she just, uh, she can be a little difficult. What do you mean? I don't know what happened. I worked with her a couple of years ago, she was great, but um... But hey, maybe Bojack getting canceled in season 6 encouraged her to come out and tell her story, as we see a billboard in the background for her in Fireflame. I don't know. For seven hours, I couldn't get in touch with anyone, and I was sure you were dead. And it was my fault for leaving you, for feeling good, for not worrying. Oh, it sucks the finale did not cover this, but maybe it's a good thing they didn't. In the last few episodes of the show, Bojack's life goes down the toilet like an unwanted fetus. Comment the song down below. The Jerry on the top of the <laughs> sandwich is having to sell his house in order to cover his multiple lawsuits. And then he moves in with Mr. Peanut Butter. After breaking into his old house and getting majorly cross-faded, Bojack goes to swim in the pool, where he passes out. This causes him to have a dying dream that becomes the episode, The View from Halfway Down, where his brain tries to ready him for death, even though I have a feeling that him puking at the dinner table scene, that was the paramedics or the family trying to revive him. I don't know. While he does manage to survive, he is still arrested for breaking and entering, and sent to prison. In the series finale, he is briefly furloughed in order to attend Princess Carolyn's wedding, where he has one final meeting with Diane. I wish I had my phone right now. Yeah, I know what you mean. I never know what to do with my hands at parties. No, I wish I had my phone so I could play you the last voicemail you left me. Diane has gotten her life together, but says that maybe it's best they aren't going to talk to one another. As Diane reveals, before he got into the pool, Bojack called her and told her he was going swimming, and she did not pick up as she was asleep. Since nothing matters anyway and nobody cares about me, I might as well go swimming, right? I'm so sorry. Call me back if you don't want me to go swimming. Otherwise, I'm just gonna assume you don't care 
Now, one of my biggest fears is that I'll forget to take a call or a text message from one of my friends or relatives. And then shortly afterwards, I find out they were going to do something awful to themselves, or they did, and only I could have prevented it. I could not imagine living with that guilt. So I do very much despise Bojack here, as he once again put all of the blame on somebody else's shoulders, Diane's. I'm sorry. I wish I could have been the person you thought I was. The person who would save you. That was never your job. Then why did you always make me feel like it was? Imagine if he really did die in that pool. What this could have done to Diane. What made it worse for me was that Diane was probably in her best place emotionally throughout the show. Her book was a huge success. She was moving to Texas to be with Guy and Sunny. She was finally starting to take her medicine, and Bojack promised her he wouldn't go crazy. Imagine how much it would have hurt if Bojack really did die. Eh, maybe it's a good thing the final scene implies they stop talking to one another. What they had wasn't healthy. Oh, I'm like a totally different person now. I smile more. Sometimes I look back at my LA years and I think, who was that person? I thought we were going to talk about other stuff. What did you do after you called your own phone, Bojack? I went outside, to the parking lot. And you just waited there for 17 minutes. Okay, let me preface this entry by saying Bojack Horseman was one of the main reasons I thought about carrying a Narcan in my purse. It's easy to get certified if you live near a big city, and so long as you attend a short class, it's often free. While I have made the point that I dislike the retcon season 6 made to Sarah Lynn Steph because Bojack already experienced consequences and I think him being on the bender would be enough to cancel him, that does doesn't mean it's not any less despicable. As it turns out, Sarah Lynn did not die in Bojack's arms, as previously believed. Instead, she merely fell unconscious. Something anybody can tell you is that if somebody passes out from drug use, time is of the essence. Their life could be saved by even one second. But Bojack freaked out, likely thinking he killed her, and like usual, he refused to own up to what he did. So he spent 17 minutes waiting to get Sarah Sarah Lynn help, just to make up a cover story to save himself. Hey, that rhymes. After I realized what had happened, I took her phone and I called myself so I could make it look like she called me. Why? I went into panic mode. Instead, he pretended that Sarah Lynn was on the bender by herself, and she called him frantic from the planetarium, where he drove over and found her. By the time she got to the hospital, she was dead. I just keep thinking about those 17 minutes. You waiting in the parking lot after she died. But she wasn't actually dead yet. She died in the hospital. Meaning that Sarah Lynn died because of Bojack. Well, also because of herself, but primarily because of Bojack. Regardless, it's probably one of his most selfish actions. For a variety of reasons. Like the fact he claimed to love Sarah Lynn like a daughter. And then he simply disposed of her when it was convenient to him. Sarah Lynn wasn't like those other girls. I loved Sarah Lynn. She was like a daughter to me. Or the fact that Bojack probably wouldn't have gone to prison or anything like that like he feared, even if she died. He's a celebrity after all, at most he would probably have to attend rehab or pay a fine. On top of that, there's also the fact that Bojack had no such thing as basic courtesy. No matter who Sarah Lynn was around, they always called 911 if something happened to her, as it was the right thing to do, you know, making sure she stays alive. Heck, back in season one, Bojack even personally drove her to the hospital during one of these excursions. I took her to rehab by the way, I tried to get her help. I can see my organs! Oh, wow, she is losing a lot of blood. Where's Sarah Lynn now? I checked her into promises. 28 days, she'll be good as new. But this time around, he was only thinking of himself. And while death by inaction isn't necessarily illegal, it's still super immoral. Yes, people can make the argument that Sarah Lynn was starting to have second thoughts about her life, and maybe this could have convinced her to get her act together finally. Or maybe she could have just went back to square one. The thing is, it doesn't matter. Bojack stole that choice from her by stealing her life, and that's why it's on the list. Ooh. 
Man, Ohio sucks. Next time, could you almost molest someone who lives in Hawaii? You could be bummed out at a luau right now. Okay, I think we can all agree that this is the worst thing Bojack has ever done, unequivocally. But why not this and Sarah Lynn? I mean, you had a bunch of other Sarah Lynn entries, are you just being lazy? Catherine, Sarah Lynn was the product of negligence. He did not mean to get her drunk, he just didn't care that he put her in that position. With Penny, he meant to cause her harm. After Penny's disastrous prom, she comes on to him and tells Bojack she wants to sleep with him. But you're 17. Which is the legal age of consent in the state of New Mexico. Okay, that's not- And I didn't have anything to drink tonight, so everything's totally legal. Penny, no. It's okay. I want this. Yeah, but- Dude, you're essentially his niece, and you're practically a child compared to him. It's like Batman and Batgirl. Like, no, that would never work. You don't date anybody or sleep with anybody who isn't old enough to drink. Bojack puts his foot down. You don't know what you want. Oh, God. <laughs> this is so dumb. No, Penny, don't- I'll see you tomorrow. Afterwards, he goes outside to talk to Charlotte, but he doesn't tell her about what Penny did, or give Charlotte a warning. What'd you do with my daughter? She had a big night. She was falling asleep on the ride home. Maybe he wants to protect Penny or something like that? I don't know. The pair eventually kiss. Oh, Bojack, um, I, I think you got the wrong idea. Bojack once again reiterates that he went to New Mexico to get with Charlotte, and when she still refuses because she has a family, she tells him to leave in the morning. Bojack goes back to the boat where he finds Penny. What are you doing here? I know what I want, Bojack. Go to bed, Penny. However, he leaves the door open, essentially giving her an open invitation to let whatever happens, happens. Before Charlotte goes upstairs, she hears some commotion going on in the boat and goes upstairs to investigate. No. Mom. Yeah, that's bad. Good thing Charlotte is there to give Bojack a scathing warning. Charlotte, I am so sorry. Don't. Don't you dare. If you are not out of my driveway in 30 minutes, I will call the police. Well, this is obviously awful, and the fate of Penny often hangs over Bojack's head and doesn't get easier for Penny and Charlotte. Come on, Sarah Lynn isn't alive. They're still alive, and they have to deal with what Bojack did to them. The pair keep what happened a secret from Kyle, and presumably Charlotte's son, while Penny herself suffers from anxiety and trauma, needing her mother's help to stay grounded. I just thought I'd stop by. A girl can't visit her mom? Why are you grilling no, me? Slow down. Breathe. Something happened at, at work. But it doesn't get any better. Eventually, Penny is able to overcome Bojack and ends up attending college at Oberlin in Ohio, a really prestigious school, but it's on the other side of the country. She develops a great relationship with the other students and seems to be doing well, almost like she healed a wound. But... <sighs> Bojack tells Sarah Lynn he wants to make amends with her as per AA, which Sarah Lynn keeps saying he 100% shouldn't do. We drove all the way to Ohio? I wanted to go to the planetarium, but you demanded we come here. You said you had to make one more amend to that Penny girl. Eventually, he tracks Penny down to a frat party. Bojack? I... You can't be here. I I don't want to see you no, here. I, I don't want to see you I, at I, all. I tried to you know, I was 17. I didn't know any better. I tried you, to. you need to leave. No, yes, Bojack had the best of intentions here, but think about it from Penny's perspective. You make a horrible mistake in high school, one you almost regret, and you almost make another. It causes you untold humiliation, and you just want to put it behind you. But you recover from it, and you are able to get as far away from that loser as possible and start living your best life. But then he finds you in the dead of night in a public place, and he's a celebrity, so even if you tell people what happened, outside of maybe your close friends, what's the chances that they'll believe you? Completely healed, before okay. you reopened it by showing up unannounced uh, at her college and all the pain came rushing back to her. Oh, good lord. In a way, it's like you destroyed her life twice. Really, once you strip away the comedy angle, this is freaking creepy. Probably one of the creepiest things Bojack has done. Like, honestly, this is one of my worst fears, too. Wow, a lot of my worst fears 
fears in this video. Besides, Penny wasn't going to talk to him anyways. Would you? I kind of like how Sarah Lynn semi calls him out afterwards. You know, on the plus side, she really seemed okay. Mm -hmm. Until she saw you and freaked out. A few years later, Penny is back in New Mexico, working as a waitress, where she makes the acquaintance of some reporters. Is this about Bojack? Is? It about Bojack? I don't know what you're looking for, but I don't know anything about it, okay? I haven't seen Bojack in years, or Sarah Lynn, but you have seen them. Once again, the wound that she's healed gets picked open right clean, and she's right back to how she was before, needing her mother's help. The reporters are doing an expose on Bojack, and they want Penny to give a statement, but Charlotte doesn't think it's such a good idea. But if we can help other people, then it will have been for something. You know, it won't just be this thing to feel bad about forever. But you don't know what's gonna happen with the story once it's out there. You have no power over it. These two would flip if they found out Bojack called Kyle. Still, we never find out what happened between them. Did Penny not adhere to her mother and put her story out there? Did she keep quiet? At most, Charlotte simply calls Bojack once again. What's Penny doing? Did Charlotte tell Kyle? Eh, maybe we're better off not knowing.